telling you right now, this is going to be different from my usual videos. Um, do expect some change in the upcoming months maybe. I'm going to be including a little more content besides makeup. So I'm going to be having like a different title for these videos because this isn't going to be like my usual makeup videos that I've been doing before this. This is more of since I have a hobby of cleaning and cooking. I love gadgets that, involve, that make cooking and cleaning simple and easy and stress-free. So this is just going to be my um, casual living kind of channel segment, whatever you want to call it. I don't even know. Maybe I'll call it Steady Living. Um, I haven't thought of a title yet at the moment. You probably are already seeing the title at this point. But this is going to be on my Panda washer and dryer. I will have the links to the exact models that I have down below for anyone interested in the exact models that I am using. And I believe the capacity is my washer. I think it's 1.3 and then my dryer is 1.5. I will double check that. Okay, so I checked and it's 1.34 close and then 1.5 for my dryer and so they're around the same size that's why I decided to go with it and I went with a smaller dryer personally because I don't want to take up too much space um, personally I don't like to have too much things too big of things if I'm in especially because I have a washer that's around the same size so I wanted one that was a dryer around the same size so I could just toss it in there and so the model I have is the Panda. I've had my washer now since it's coming up on a year, on this February of 17th. And so um, my dryer though is only a month old. I got it last January, um, but I feel comfortable enough to talk about it. If I have any issues that come up with my dryer, I will make an update about it. Uh, so far, no issues. Um, my washer no issues except for some things that I am going to mention in this video. Uh, the, I have no hookups in my apartment personally, so that is why we settled on portable washer and portable dryer. Um, if you have hookups but you wanted like a cheaper alternative, do know you are going to be sacrificing some things to accommodate for that cheaper price tag. Um, for example, um, they probably take longer than most washers do or dryers do, um, but the voltage, I mean the wattage is cheaper, is lower than the regular ones, it's 850. And if you have any questions that come up during this video, you can go ahead and drop them down below. I will answer as soon as I see them. Um, anything that I do mention that I'm using for these washers and dryers, uh, I will put links down below to make it more simple, more easy to access. I do mention that I am not fully satisfied with my setup. Um, I do have plans in the future, maybe I'll do an update when that comes along, but for now, here is my review and what I think so far of my washer and dryer. And a little spoiler though, I do love them. I am the type of person that I can love something, but I can tell you what's the problem with it. I've always been that way. It doesn't mean that I don't love it less or love it more or whatever, but it is something to consider for those of you out there. So this is where I currently have my washer and dryer. It's right between my kitchen and my living room. This is not the final setup. I'm thinking of getting a stand and putting it over here to have them like the washer and then the dryer on top stacked. Um, as you can see, the dryer is smaller by it by a little bit. I'll have the dimensions put up on the screen here if you're curious about like the inside depth. It looks like this. And that is the filter right here. And this is how it looks. I need to clean the 
felt one. I use a lint roller to clean this part. And then you clean it by snapping it out. And you remove that lint. I do that right now. Okay, so I removed the lint. And to put it back on, it's pretty simple. You have this little part. Make sure that part is pointing outwards. And then it slides right in. And that is all when you're removing the lint. It does get dirty. So I do go over it with the duster. And this is how the felt one looks. I've heard people say that this does deteriorate over time. I've had this for a little over a month and a half maybe now. It still hasn't deteriorated on me. But I would recommend you go over it with a lint roller. I do see a difference in the quality of your heating if you make sure this is clean. And the way it captures the lint too, it will capture the lint way more if this is to remain clean along with this one. And to pop it back in, you just, it pops right back into the socket. There's no twisting. It's just like a pull out push mechanism. I'm going to be rolling this. So that's why I left it out. Some of you might be curious as to this part. You just place it on top here. So it just goes on like that. There's nothing holding it down. It's just lay flat on top. And this is, I just use a lint roller to clean it. And so when you put it back in, you just hold this. Hopefully you can see that well and push it into place and that is all and that is how you change the lint filter or empty the lint filter pretty easy process and this is the washer it comes with this adapter the little hose for the water when it drains but it connects to the sink and the button features I usually use either standard or heavy duty. If I have something that's got like stained and I want to quickly remove the stain, I'll use quick wash. But I use heavy duty for mainly jeans, towels, bedding, and things like that. Standard for t-shirts, underwear, and anything that's not um that because you want to make sure that you are using heavy duty for the more thicker materials because you do not want to mess up your washer by overworking it with normal bedding and it has the water levels here usually you always have full load so it's always on five but you have one two five there you can lock it for your child if you hold these two down and pause and the power button and so far i have no issues that right there is probably due to me moving it around okay but it does not affect the performance or anything um the power cord is hanging on the back right there and this is the water hose sometimes this will become loose from moving it into the when you're plugging it in so i always make sure to tighten this and as for any issues, don't have any issues. I Oh, one issue actually. Let me move this real quick. So I leave this unscrewed now since I had this issue once. And well, let me open it up. You see this hose right here? I have to make sure that I push it in because this hose right here will loosen. The glue here got loose and it popped off. And this is like the water level sensor type thing. Because if this is gone, if this is out, you will overfill and flood wherever you have your washing hookup at, hooked up to. So I would, if you have any issues with, oh, suddenly it's not stopping when you're um, filling it up with water and it overfills, it's probably that. All you have to do is just make sure it's all the way in. And so that's why I never like have this anymore um, screwed. So that I can always check up on that piece. 
other than that i haven't had any issues at all with this i just make sure to check to see if that is hooked up properly and let's see i will probably be showing you how i go about washing the load in a little bit here as for how much i can fit into these also this does have wheels but the wheels are only in the back so you kind of have to like tilt it to move it around if that makes sense and there is handles on this part as well as this part on the side for you to be help you move it i might get a little dolly system but so far this is working fine for us there's no accessories or anything to add this is the link catcher it does pretty darn well i do oops focusing i do empty it in between washes and that's how it looks and i also because when washing like um lint can get caught in the edges of here inside and in the crevices you can see a little bit there because i couldn't get it out but i got it out on the other side so i do give it a good wipe down on the inside as well put it through a wash cycle but with nothing in it i will put baking soda uh with vinegar and just let it rent, uh, soak and wash through on the normal cycle because the normal cycle has only like two wash cycles and it's like very um long the first wash cycle and then the last one's like at 10 minutes or something so i don't like using normal unless i'm cleaning the machine and this is the bar the only problem i had when i got this is that it had a lot of those styrofoam balls and they got everywhere inside of the machine so that when i was rolling it out for the following year i would get those little balls here and there all around my house now and also too i mostly got it out i think at this point but if you get yours you probably will see that they put plastic around this handle right here and then they put it on so when i got it i tried removing the plastic but there was like little plastic big stuck because it was underneath tucked away in this handle which is weird to me because it's like why did you screw something in through the plastic a little weird but anyways so that's the washer i can fit in terms of like a really thick load i which is my husband's work clothes you know how the um, when a, your husband works in construction or landscaping they have those really thick denim pants i can fit about three with a pair of underwear and socks and then in terms of shirts i could fill it up pretty well i try not to fill it like over this right here to give it space between the water and all that as for um bedding i have a california king size bed and i can fit two three pillowcases one is one of those full body pillowcases as well as the sheet and the fitted sheet in here no problem and towels i can fit about three to four towels so that's how much i fit in jeans like regular jeans i can fit about four to five maybe but the thing is i like to do three to four because that's what fits better in here in terms of jeans to dry in time because you do want to give it some space in here so it dries properly and in here i have a little venting system i have it here for now i do want to get like a gluing thing to glue it up here at some point but for now that's fine they have this one has handles on the sides as well if you need to lift it and so and then this is the setting i have it always set on high which is when you push it down and i use it mostly on red and i just wait until like 30 minutes have passed and then i go in when 30 minutes pass i always take out the clothes like flap them out like you know when you flap them out make sure it's all smooth put them inside out and put them again to dry about 25 to 30 minutes more and then they're around dry around that time 
matters though how big of a load I have. It might take a f like 10 to 15 minutes more if I have a really big stuffed load. And I use four dryer balls because I tried two and honestly I saw no difference. I don't know how some people could say two is enough. When I looked it up, if you Google it, they said for a small to medium load, they recommend three to four dryer balls. And for a large to, like a medium to large one, they recommend more, four to six or something like that. I think it was like five to seven or something. And so with four, I have noticed a difference. And also too, no more tangles. And I love that with my fitted sheet. And that they make it that it's less wrinkly. And they do help with the drying time by like, I would say five to ten minutes. Not a huge, huge difference, but it is a difference when you're trying to cut down on your dry time. And so that's what I do on the techniques here. I'll make sure to wring them out after 30 minutes. And then there's no timer unless you set it on that timer. So if you put 80, it will go off on 80 minutes. But if you want the highest heat in the red, it's not going to go down unless you wait that whole time but by that time it's going to be way too dry and you're going to shrink your clothes so i always just set personal timer on my google and that's how all the tips so far that i've noticed with fitting something oh as well as i could fit most clothes that i wash here directly into my dryer because they are the same capacity i think this is even a, like a little bit more and that so they would fit directly, except for pants. Pants take longer, and I have to make sure they're in smaller qualities to, quantities to put in here. But that is fine because I do do my laundry by types, and I have a laundry schedule. So that's nothing, no big deal for me there. And then in the next clip, I will go ahead and show you how I do a load of laundry. I forgot to mention as well that the dryer, um, can f uh, it fits most size loads and it dries around average is about an hour on high, an hour on high. And if you look at the manual, it does say that it takes an hour on high and a hundred on the orange level on the bottom here. It takes a hundred on that to fully dry a load of clothes, it says. But I use it on high to shorten the time a little bit. It is this as well as my washer are both 850 watts. A regular washer or dryer, they can range from about 1500 up to like 5000, I believe, watts. So... I would like suggest that if you're expecting a 45 minute dryer time, it is not going to dry it in that amount of time. It will take an average of about an hour to an hour 15 minutes, but you are wasting less wattage on these. I see about in a total of a month, I see maybe our bill going up 10 to $15 around there maybe 20 if i have an excessive amount of laundry that month but in all that's only the amount that we waste in electricity on these two and we live in california so our energy cost is probably higher than most of the rest of the country if not one of the highest so if you live somewhere else you probably will see a significant amount less in your and i have a a calculator that I used to, to figure out how much I would cost me um, both yearly and monthly. I will put them down below if you're curious yourself to test it out. And so I think that's all the details. Um, I keep these unplugged unless I'm using them. This, it asks you to put water inside to catch the lint better. And so I do do that. It does raise the humidity of the house a bit if you're using it excessively, like to do multiple loads at once. It can raise the humidity of your house. But anyway, so those are like the simple things about these that I can point out. Um, 
anything super fluffy, fluffy in terms of blankets, like a throw blanket, I think anything above a full size will be too much for the washer. But then anything else below that is fine so long as it's not like a big thick material. If it's fine in our washer and into our dryer. But I wash my uh, bedding, my sheets, fitted sheet, three pillowcases. No issues in there. And it's a California king size bed. And then they fit directly into here. Rags, bedding. Um, yeah, those two. They dry significantly fast in the dryer compared to anything else. They will dry in about maybe 30 to 45 minutes. The rags less, maybe 30, 25 to 30 minutes. Okay, so for the hookup, first off, I remove this little bit here. Set it to the side. I keep my adapter in this little crevice. And I put it, I wonder if I can do this with my left hand. I don't know what, back. I couldn't put it on even with two hands for some reason today. But anyways, so I connect this. I do have a little bit of plumber's tape in there to help it with the, any leakage. Um, you don't need it if your faucet isn't leaking. But if it is leaking, you might want to put a little bit of plumber's tape. And so you put that there. And then you grab this white hose. And what you do, sorry, you pull this part down. Stick it in all the way. Let go. And then you hear that click. If you don't hear that click and you turn on the water, this thing will like shoot out because the water more pressured so it'll just shoot right off and then I go ahead and hang this hose the hose inside my sink and I'll rest this like that so that when the water is going it pushes down at the same time I personally haven't had any issues with this coming out I know some people have but that is also because I feel like my width of my sink is probably not as big or as small as some so that do take that into account and then the last thing to do of course is to plug it in and then it is all ready for a wash and this is what i use when i wash um i use this because the water is not nearly as hot as with regular washers are, so it could ha leave an odor in your clothes. So I use this to kill any bacteria that could cause any odors. And this is the laundry detergent that I use. It is my favorite. By far, even compared to Tide. I haven't used Tide in this washer personally, but I like this. I also looked up on Google, and it is safe for the pipes from what I saw googled on their site and so i use these two and then i'll use baking soda and white distilled vinegar if i'm using something that has a little more odors in it and so let me go ahead and get this load ready so i'm gonna add a little bit of distilled vinegar let me make sure i'm getting you guys in the shot Baking soda. If it wants to come out. And I'm washing my husband's work clothes, so that's why I'm using all this. As for the amount that I use per so I'm taking you over to some more well lidded area. If you can see, that is just like the tip of the cap right there. That's all the amount of detergent I use personally. Um, to some, this probably might even be a little too much, but to me, I found this sufficient enough for my washes. Okay, and then I close this. I always put my detergent in and let it run a little bit, a little water to mix, and then I'll put my lows in. 
So I go power. I'm gonna go to heavy duty. And then you can check the water level. It's always gonna start with five. And then you just push play and then put the water on. I know some people say, oh, don't hook it up and put hot water. I reviewed my entire manual. Um, it does not say anything about not using hot water. It says do not connect to a direct hot water outlet of like those washer machine ones. They only disperse hot water. Any hot water that's 50 degrees Fahrenheit up, you do not want to use on your washer. Anything below that should be fine. And you won't be able to see because I'm using hot water for the work clothes just to get it more clean. And then once it's like that. Alrighty, so I have around two pairs of shirts some around three to four pairs of underwear and socks um a sweater and as you can see if you can see oof, there is still a significant gap right there and i think that's good enough i just push play and it will continue I really don't know why it's showing up like that. On my screen, it is showing 52. Just so you know. It shows 52 and then BB. BB means that it's on the wash cycle. So a uh, heavy duty cycle will be around an almost an hour, 55 I believe minutes it starts at. And it will at 28 minutes, it will go to the second wash cycle, which where I will add my Lysol laundry sanitizer and then at 10 minutes it will do the third wash cycle and I don't add anything to that wash cycle and so that is it washing when the next wash cycle comes up I will show you what I do then also I forgot to add that at, it stopped filling around 50 something minutes like a few minutes in and then at 49 to 48 minutes it will like have a gush of water again and then it after that second stream of water I do turn off my water and then just come back when the cycle is less when the second cycle wash pops up I turn it back on just so that I don't have the water running be more mindful of the how much water I'm wasting and so I do do that as well as I have one of these like strainer catcher things in my kitchen sink. It does catch through the lint that does manage to escape out this drainage hose. Um, I do plan on getting like a attachable lint catcher to this. I would recommend that in the feet for anyone that is thinking of buying an add-on accessory to this if you don't have one of these. Um, I have used it in my restroom without one of these with no issues but I would not recommend it since I do see that lint does get in there and I wouldn't like it to clog up anyone's pipes. Um, so I mostly do all my laundry in the kitchen. So that's not an issue with this. But eventually I will get a lint catcher just to be a little more secure about all of that. So it's at 24 right now. Uh, I was wrong. It wasn't 28. 28 is when it drains and 24 is when the second style start uh, second cycle is going to start and as you can see it pauses until I turn on the water fill this up to that line on top if you can see that there is a line right there hold on let me give you a better view there's a line inside that cap the second one the most tall one I fill it up to there and I put it in there because that is the measurement that the product recommends to kill the bacteria in smaller loads. So I fill it all the way up. And then I pour it. And this, regarding where you are living, um, it might be harder to find that type. I do see that there is a 
There we go. There is a Clorox alternative, but I did notice that that one is less product and you had to add more. So I do like the Lysol one much better, though the Clorox one smells really nice. So that's it filling up and then it's just going to go to 10 and then it's going to drain again and then, well, it'll drain again, go to 10 for the third wash cycle and then it will also go drop back down, drain again after I think it was like at 5 or 4 or something like that and then the load will be fully washed then and then after this is all done washing I will show you when I put it in the dryer. Uh, maybe you'd all be interested in the noise level, if you can hear that. And like, when you're in the same vicinity, the kitchen area as it, um, it's decently loud, it's not overpowering, it's not like you have to talk any louder to be heard or anything when having a conversation, but it is on a, well, it's in a suitable noise level, it's not enough that I think your neighbors would be knocking on your door telling you to quiet down, but um, it get when the metal is like clinking against the edges like zippers or buttons, you will hear it louder then. Uh, but overall, it's not loud. Um, if I were to go, you can barely hear it from over here. So, this is how it looks draining. I do have to keep an eye on my strainer because I do notice that if it's full of lint, it can try to overfill my sink but personally my sink's design made that it will fall into the next sink first but luckily it's never overfilled or anything like that but if you do have like a strainer mechanism keep an eye out with it and clean it in between washes so it doesn't get flooded okay so the load just finished and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how much lint this catches so there you go it's pretty good for like a washer I always empty it out to the best of my ability. I cannot right now because, once again, I'm doing this all one-handed. But it just pops right back in. Throw this out. I always, like, flatten the clothes and then I put them in because they say that that is the recommended way to do it. So I'll just toss these in there. I have one dryer ball there. Hey, bye. And then... A beanie. I had like four pairs of underwear and socks in there. And then I put the beanie, the sweater, and so far I have it on the ground so I'm always constantly crouching to put stuff in it. And then put it in there. And I'll put the dryer balls in between clothes and on top and there's a load let's shut it let me go ahead and plug this in and now i will show you right here i will set it to 160 on the highest heat and that is how loud it is you can hear it. The clinking of the like buttons is gonna be the loudest thing. You can hear that. But I feel like this is even more quieter than my washer. But that, oh. That's why I do want to get a stand because crouching down is a little bit of a pain. But I use this to carry my laundry to and fro. And I'll be okay, Google. Set a timer for 30 minutes. Second timer for 30 minutes. Starting now. And I'll see you when I am checking on them. 30 minutes have passed. And the 
Okay, so they're all feeling like maybe they need 15 minutes more. So what I do now that 30 minutes have passed, I will pull this all out, turn it inside out, and then put them back in. It just makes it so that it dries more evenly and thoroughly. Um, I've seen a difference when doing it inside out, especially in pants. I do recommend that. Um, or any thicker materials too, they will dry faster evenly on both sides if you do that. Even in any dryer recommendation, they do recommend that you pull them out, straighten them out, and then put them back in. So that's what I'm going to do now, and I'll be right back. I already took them out, flattened them. I already started putting them in and forgot to record, so I'm just going to put this last sweater in. So the sweater, and I'm going to set a timer for, let's see, we did 30, 20 more minutes, and then I'll check on them. A lot of times, too, um... Even though I try to do like materials, I sometimes have to throw in one thing in there to not waste the load. Or um, some things dry a little bit faster than the other, so I'll pull those out and let the rest dry. And so in 20 more minutes, I'll come back and check on them. And this is right here where it's at from where I left it. I think I put it at 180 or 160 between somewhere there. It's at 140. So in 20 minutes, I will check on it, and then sometimes I even let it run on additional little 20 minutes on the warm cycle instead of the hot cycle. Um, so I'll check it in 20 minutes. If it's still not dry, I'll let it run 20 more minutes on the warm cycle. Alright. So, so far, it's been 30 minutes. I'll check it in 20 minutes, and then I'll be 50 minutes. And then I'll let it 20 more minutes, which will be an hour and 10 minutes. They were slightly, ever so slightly, a little damp. So I'm putting them back in. This time I'm going to run them through the warm cycle. It left it right there at 120. So I'm going to let it run for 20 minutes on just warm. So that's going to be a total of an hour and 10 minutes, I think. But that's only because I want it to be a little more dry. I could probably run it on hot for 5 minutes or 10 minutes. And that would be just an hour. But I don't want it to be too dry. So I'm just going to do it 20 minutes are warm. But they're definitely going to be done by then. So just letting it run on warm for 20 more minutes. So that will be a total of an hour and 10 minutes. So I checked five minutes in just to be sure and they were dried. So luckily I didn't have to wait that full amount of time. So it took me about an hour to dry all of this and I to have a sweater, a beanie, three pairs of socks, four pairs of underwear and two long sleeve shirts. And so this is all of it here. I hope that it was helpful. I hope this was informative in making your decision to go portable or not. Or if you're in a, like an apartment with no hookups, if this is for you. Um, there's a little more labor intensive than regular washer and dryer. But it is worth it. Not having to lug around the laundry to the laundromat here and there. And to be able to do it in the comfort of your own home. Now, as you can see, they're very wrinkle free no wrinkles here they're really dried up really well um i have no complaints um 60 minutes this is all i could ask for honestly and i hit 850 volts i mean watts and then i have a whole i'm able to wash and then dry all in my home i might have to move it here and there i might update my setup or get a little accessories here and there and i will do an update then and to see how i like it or if it was worth it or not if you have any questions don't forget to ask down below i hope you're all having a nice day stay happy and stay healthy and make things simple simplify everything so i'll see you next time bye